So, today we're going to talk about the 10.21 patch notes. But before we do that, I didn't get a chance to talk about the patch, the mid patch that came out on the last patch. The B patch on the mid patch of the last patch. Yeah, just go with that. Um, there were a bunch of nerfs there because there were uh, things that were kind of becoming a little degenerate. Uh, these are sticking around for a while, so I'll quickly cover them. Mostly, the issue was Spirit of Felios was kind of smurfing everybody. It was pretty much best build on the patch, 100%. Um, probably better than Spirit Zed. So, they lowered Aphelios' starting mana to make it harder for him to ramp up to get um, more turrets down. And they nerfed Spirit 4. I've had my issues with Spirit, I think, in general. I I think it, hindsight being 2020, it probably was not the best idea to go forward with um, this style. I would not be surprised if Spirit goes away in whatever the 4.5 patch is going to look like, because it's it's causing a lot of problems in the game. Um other changes, Janna, so this is a, a actually a, a bug. Uh, it says 60 everywhere, but it was actually 50. Janna was actually really good in the last patch, so they buffed that back up to, well, nerfed it, up to 60 cost, what it was supposed to be. Um, Ash got a nerf. Um, Ash isn't, like, in my opinion, Ash isn't a game-winning build, but it's usually a free top four build if you get Ash 2. So, in that case, they decided they were going to nerf Ash 1 and Ash 2. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, Vigar, we're going to talk about Vigar a bit more, but um, in preparations for some changes, they gave him an across the board um, damage nerf. So, now that that's taken care of, I'm going to just go right into 10.21. Or 10.21? I hate this configuration of, of new numbering patches. This drives me insane. I don't like it. I don't like it. <sighs> uh, we'll get back to the highlights. So, they announced the rewards for Galaxy Ranked. If you placed in gold or higher, you get this shiny boy. If you place gold or higher in both of the ranked seasons, you get this shiny boy. Yay! Also, your emote uh, is supposed to represent your final rank in the second half of set 3. Shiny, yay! Systems, okay, so this is probably the big part of the patch. Um, when they released set 3, they made a change to the shop. And the change to the shop was that when you bought a champ, when you, when you passed on a champion, so you didn't buy the champion, it would not show up again in the next shop. This proved to be a little more problematic than I think we thought. I, I really have three reasons, and they highlight two of them. Um, for one, and probably the most obvious one, um, three stars had kind of gotten a little out of control on this set. It be, Because of the chosen mechanic, it got really easy to three-star things. And this addition of the shop rotation, um, taking out champions that you're not buying, was just adding more fuel to that fire. Uh, that's probably the primary reason this is going away. Uh, the second reason this is going away is because it wasn't an obvious rule. It wasn't something that was obvious to the player was happening. Unless you actually understood the game and were like deep into like what we're doing right now really deep in that level of knowledge, you didn't know this was happening. So when you accidentally passed on a champion and it didn't show up, it was like, okay, that what you, you didn't understand that you weren't going to get that champion because you accidentally passed up on it. What I think um, probably is a, a little... A, another reason I kind of value a bit more, um, this change really, really changed the way the early game was played. Uh, I think a lot more than anyone expected. So, generally in the early game with TFT, you would buy out champion... You would buy out the shop whenever possible. Because the idea was to get two stars as soon as possible. Because with two stars, you were either saving life, winning fights. Two stars in the early game were really important. So, you would just buy out the shop whenever you can. If you couldn't, you would buy out whatever you already have champions of... 
or you would buy um, just high quality champions. This kind of changed that. You never, you very rarely would ever buy out the shop anymore. Instead, it was generally considered to be more effective to just buy out good champions in the early game and completely ignore all the other champions. Um, this really limited what the openers looked like. I think openers got way too standardized and... Like, even, like, in general, TFT openers are supposed to be fairly standardized. I think it just got way too standardized. There were, there were just openers that just everybody played every game. And they could get away with it because of the way the shops worked. So, sh this shop change, gone. Um, you will see random champions in the shop at all times. It will not have to do with what you bought in your previous shop. Yay. Um, other changes. Uh, so they don't go too far in depth on this one. I mean, I can understand why, but... Because I, I think... I th Chosen appearance right in the early game is, is, is sometimes kind of important. Um, sometimes you'll get a champion that's chosen in the early game, and you just pass on it because it's a crap champion. A, a good example often tends to be Vayne. So Vayne being uh, Dusk, is very useful, but it's not very useful at any point in time in the game until you get to that late part of the game, the mid-late game, where you can actually turn Dusk on. So, if you got Vayne as a Chosen, you often pass on it. But there were other champions such as Tom Kench, Diana, Aphelios, or um, what are some other good examples? Um, Garen, Zed, if you got these champions in the early game, snap take, they were yours, you were running with it. It was like pure RNG luck high roll right there off the dot. So they want to try to like keep that spread down. Make it so that you're more likely to get a champion that's chosen to show up in your shop and get that high roll at a more consistent rate. I kind of word that weirdly, say that you get that high roll at a high consistent rate. Uh, one problem often is that you just don't find a chosen. So now you're guaranteed to find at least one chosen by 2-2. Two, two, which is a decent change. I, I probably would have just gone straight with 2-1. Or maybe like your first level 4 shop gets you a chosen. Actually, that's a really nice change. I should have thought about that. You just can't find a chosen until level 4. And your first level 4, you find a chosen. Yeah. It probably would alter leveling too much, so let's not think about it too much. Um, so, they've modified the chosen appearance rate to reduce some of the luck in worst cases and streakiness. I, I, I read that as they have... It's random. Air quotes. It's random the chosen you find. It's random when you find them. But it's random the same way that who you're going against in each round is random. You could work it out if you knew the math in working in the background. Which is why they're not telling us how they're doing it. Because you could abuse it in some way. Based on what you've seen, you could choose when you want to roll to find a chosen that you know will be successful to you. So, odds are, we're never going to know what this is. But they want us to know that... The ID, the high roll chosen and the low roll chosen, not going to happen as often. Now, in my opinion, probably the fix is there's going to be more high roll chosen, where you're going to get an actual, like, decent chosen that you can work with in the early game. So, this is, this is a pretty big system change overall that they've put here. Um... I, it's going to, it's going to revert the early game back to what it was in set three, where you just, you just buy out the shop. Whenever you can. But the the chosen part is what kind of has me interested. Because it's it was not uncommon for me to get to like level 6, level 7. And I still haven't found a good chosen to play with my comp. Hopefully we have a lot less of those. Trait changes. Bunch of them. This was a big patch by the way. So we're going to be at this for a while. We're already like 10 minutes in. So expect like a 40 minute video here. Alright, um, we'll talk about shades when we get to that. Um, adept. So, Adept is not 
good. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at pretty much at that. Adept's not good. Um, they're trying to buff it up. I don't think this is going to this is gonna shake the boat in any way. Um, I'm not quite sure what they do to Adept to make it better. I don't think changing these numbers is going to do it, is going to be that much. I think they need to change how it interacts with other traits and perks. Hunter. Okay, so Hunter is getting kind of a rework-ish. Ish, ish we work. Um, so it's going back to kind of how it was in the PTR. Or PBE. I, I confuse those two terms a lot. Um, so on the PBE, Hunter, Hunter, um, the damage bonus scaled up as you got more Hunters in. While at the same time, the rate of the Hunters firing also scaled up. So both of them scaled up. Uh, a lot of people thought that that was kind of overkill. So instead, they set the bonus damage to a set rate, and it just scales up the amount of hits you get on the Hunter bonus. So it, it goes from like 3 to 2.5 to 2 to like 1.5, I think. Um, the problem is Hunter is like generally just not played. Uh, it's played for convenience with Ash, and that's pretty much about it. So, there's, like, no dedicated builds that take advantage of having a bunch of hunters. They want that to change. And it's clear, because they did this. Um, so, essentially, this is a nerf to having two hunters, which is basically a, a nerf to um, Elderwood Hunters, Elderwood Ash. It's the same at three, which, I mean, if you had a chosen hunter in Elderwood Ash, it now does the same thing. But at, let me see, this must be 4 and 5. I'm, I'm trying to remember how Hunter scales. I believe it was 2, 3, 4, 5. So at 4 and 5, you get, you get a bonus. Um, now, that said, at 4 and 5, you're, that's a lot of hits that you're doing. But it, I think I tried mentally to come up with how you would run 4 and 5, and it just like didn't work out very well. So I don't think this is going to rock the boat. And in reality, this is just a nerf to Elderwood Ash. Moonlight 5 now exists. Stars up to lowest champions. So, what this means is that if you have a Moonlight Chosen and the three other Chosens, you now have Moonlight 5. Moonlight 5 takes your two instead of your lowest and stars them up. So, you can technically have two four stars. Um, I've thought about this for a while and I'm not quite sure where this build's going to stand. Uh, I think in general, Moonlight is going to be a significantly worse build on this patch which for reasons we'll get into later but it's not like it's a trash build you can still do it i just don't know if running two moonlights with a chosen is better than running five moonlights with a chosen my opinion is running two is probably better because you can have a much more functional composition but if you high roll it really well and no one else is playing moonlight i mean you could do this I think the main issue with this is that you're never going to get above... You're going to be, like, level 6 the entire game. Trying to hit all of these three stars. It's also going to, like, take up so much bench space trying to get all these three stars. I honestly don't think this is going to be that much better than Moonlight 3. But I do like the idea. And I do appreciate it. Uh, Mystic is getting a buff because magic damage is ridiculous on this, pat on this set. So... Yeah, tiny tiny nerfs to Mystic everywhere. I'm very curious if we see bigger buffs to Mystic 4. I think we're probably going to be seeing bigger buffs to Mystic 4 in the future. I mean, Mystic 6 is like not a playable thing anyone actually plays. But Mystic 4 is at a point where it's good, but is it worth the three slots with a Chosen? Because you're not going to run four Mystics unless you're running um, Ari. We'll just have to see. Um, either way, I don't think these are going to move the needle. This might. This the the two might. The two might move the needle a little bit, but it's just gonna. It, you're not gonna like really notice it. It's just going to make builds you play already better. You're not going to make more builds where you flex in Mystic. Ninja. Okay, big change in Ninja here. So, no change in Ninja one. Ninja 4 is getting a gigantic buff. This is actually a ridiculous buff. 
so from what I have heard and seen about Ninja, I haven't like I think I've played it like once as a meme and got rolled because it, it's it's a meme. Um, Ninja Ninja transitions are really awkward, like really, really, really awkward, because you have to go from one ninja to four ninjas in a single turn. You don't you don't go from having one ninja to two ninja to three ninja to four ninja. You go from one to four. So you have to build up your bench of ninjas, throw them all in at once, and make a crazy turn transition. That's hard to do. That's not easy for players to do. Not to mention for that, you have to change out your entire comp to fit these four ninjas in. Is it worth it? 150 AD and AP says yes to me. Also, Akali is ridiculous. Uh, people are really sleeping on Akali right now because there's just better things to be playing. But, like, Akali blue buff Ludens is absurd. Like, you will dumpster people with that with that unit. Especially with the buffs we're going to get to Ludens in a bit. Shades. So, this appears to be different from what Mortdog had said previously is going to happen with Shades. And I, I think, in the end, I like this more. So, or, originally what I had heard was that instead of all the Shade stuff happening on the third attack, it's happening on the fourth attack. So, they've changed it so now shade the Shades get the stealth effect after their third attack. So... Attack, 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 shade. So what it used to be was you got it for your third attack. So you would attack, attack, shade, attack. But now the additional bonus damage applies on the fourth attack rather than the third. So that means you attack, 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 you go shade, attack again for bonus damage and lose stealth. I think this is a good fix to a lot of the issues with Shade. Um, people were complaining about Shade because the the particularly the stealth effect the Diagro. I don't have overall too much of an issue with Diagro. I think Diagro is beaten. I think like effects like this are beaten by with CC and AOE, and occasionally like debuffs and stuns. Like there's a lot of ways I think to get around this that are really effective that people just kind of ignore and just get 1v3, get 1v4 and 1v3 by things with stealth mechanics, because the AI is trash. <laughs> but, um, I think this is a good fix to that, because this actually makes a lot more sense to me, and will give more time for people to be attacking these shade units before they go into their stealth. So, uh, good change. Um, and to round that out, they actually did buff up um, shade bonus damage. So, this is a nerf. Don't be fooled by these damage increases, this is a nerf. Because you're going to be doing this damage less often. Uh, Vanguard 8 now exists um, with a buff to Vanguard 6 and Vanguard 8. Magic damage is blowing people out and we're buffing Vanguard, so I got nothing to say here. And if you meme real good, I, I, I will laugh because you memed real good with Vanguard 8. Cultus. So Cultus got a minor rework. So Cultus now works like mech. That's, that's basically what has happened here. Um, the problem with Cultus was Cultus 3 was way too strong, and Cultus 6 and Cultus 9 were kind of meme-y. Eh, just not very good. You were just playing these Cultists, and it was kind of like, eh, eh, shrug. But, in the early game, Cultus 3 was busted. It's probably the best opener you can play. Like, no doubt. Just play Cultus 3, throw in Jarvan, have Keeper, shh laugh so they're reworking it Galio's base health and base AD gets a significant drop and that's because he gets 12% bonus for each star level on each of your cultists now this is actually kind of important to think about because now usually with traits you only scale at the set points so, for cultists, you would have only scaled at 3, 6, and 9 by having 3, 6, and 9 cultists. Now, with this, you actually scale with having 4 cultists. You scale with having 5 cultists, and you hit a power spike at 6. Um, I think this is actually a really good change. It's basically what they did the mech, but 
the math is more fuzzy now. I haven't seen the math on what the stats look like with this, but um, I do like the change, and I think it will make the game quite a bit better for cultists moving in, especially like when you have like cultists three, and you've mid gamed in the cultist six, and you're like, I have no idea what to do from here. You just keep playing cultists and go to cultist nine. Who cares? Just, just go, go all the way, man. Just do it. Um, I don't know if this is going to be a top tier build, but I it should steal some top fours pretty easily. I think with this change, especially if you're running cultists in compositions where no cultist is contested, it's particularly the end game ones like Aatrox and Jin. Because you start getting them at the two star, while your older ones have already a, like high two star, maybe three star, and you're like, okay, I've got really good, really good Galio now, yay. Divine, Divine's getting a rework as well. Upon attacking six times or dropping below fifty percent health, Divine units remove all control, crowd control, take sixty fifty percent reduced damage. And deal 50% bonus true damage during the duration of their session. So, what changed here was Divine used to be permanent. So, Divine lasted for all of combat. But in return, these buffs were not that great. I don't actually remember what they were, but they weren't obscene. Now, they get to be obscene and really, really good. Why? Because now we have durations to deal with. Um... My prediction on how this is going to work... So, you have to understand, 50% reduced damage when you hit 50% health is effectively an extra 50% health. You, it's it, That's just how it's going to work out. Now, it's not going to work out always like that. It's probably going to be like more 40-30% additional health. The bonus true damage is kind of absurd, though. Um... There's a handful of champions that I suspect that this is going to be incredibly good on. Probably Warwick. I, I think the biggest the biggest place where this is going to have an effect on is Warwick. I think there was a thought among Riot that in the TFT team that Warwick was going to be really freaking good. But he isn't. So, let's make him really freaking good. Which is what this does. Now, that said, two divine only lasts four seconds. That's actually not very long. You're not going to get much out of that. Four lasts seven seconds. That's probably worthwhile. Um, six is probably where you peek out. Um, and eight, like, all of combat. <laughs> like, if you trigger it, you're, you, you usually die <laughs> before 14 seconds la ends. But, um... I could see builds where you have four divine pretty easily. I think I think you're going to be seeing a decent bit of that. I don't think it'll be an S tier build, but it'll be like a low A, high B tier build that people can do. Um, and it will probably revolve around Warwick, uh, Frontline, I believe Jax is divine. So Frontline Jax. Uh, unsure from there what other divine units you would actually play in this. I'd have to look that up, because I honestly don't know. Fortune. Okay, so there, the issue with Fortune was, if you rolled a Fortune Tom Kench in the early game, and then quickly found your Annie, Fortune 3 roll, would high roll pretty high. Like, regardless of whether you won or lost rounds, you were going to get a lot of excess um, gold and components. I've I've done it a couple times. It's it's actually an insane opener if you get Fortune Tom Kench. Like it's actually really really good, and more people should be doing it. So in return, they're nerfing a lot of the what I would call the free gold you get off Fortune. So when instead of having a dedicated loss streak, you're just like, I won a game, I lost two games, I won a game, won a game, lost a game. They're it's gonna they're gonna try and balance that out a bit more on these like low loss streaks. At the same time, uh, Fortune Six is a meme, so they buffed it, and I'm going to continue to ignore it. 
So if, if you're wondering what I believe the problem with Fortune Six is, is is you're you have to play a four cost in Sejuani. You're almost always going to have a four cost in Sejuani in your comp, but you're running Fortune, so you need to find that in the early game, which is problematic <laughs> because it's a four cost. Champion changes. Um, Diana four star loses one orb. Okay, I I believe the un understanding for why they did that was to make it scale. A, the scale make a little more sense because going from six to ten is actually quite a bit. While six to nine is it, it kind of scale. The scale that you're going up makes more sense. Um, Elise at three star gets additional health. You're not going to three star Elise. Don't don't three star Elise. That's a mistake. <laughs> Um, Nadine is getting a pretty significant damage boost here. Um, I suspect there was a thought that Nadine was going to be an early game, uh, item carry. So, a lot of people would be playing her. But, um, in my experience, she's not very good. Uh, TF is 100% better. So, they buffed her. And now, I think she's good. And probably one of the better early game carries you can have. Now, do I think this means you should hyper roll your Nadines? No, please don't hyper roll your Nadines. She's just going to be your item carrier for now. Aphelios Turt now stops firing when Aphelios is disabled. This is your GA fix, people. Be happy that you've gotten your GA fix. Um, this doesn't destroy Moonlight Aphelios Spirit. Um, that's still a decent build. But this essentially means you're not going to put GA on him because there's no point to putting GA on him. It also means that you now have to put Quicksilver on him. You, you're not going to get away with not running Quicksilver. You have to run Rageblade. You have to run Quicksilver. Um, Jarvan at 3-star is getting a gigantic damage boost. Um, Jarvan is kind of a slept-on champion. Uh, Jarvan's actually really good. In the early game, he often turns on Keeper, which can give you enough HP to win out fights. So, this will probably may allow you to keep him later into the game. I, I'm pretty sure the goal here is to make Keeper 4 a bit better. When, right now, Keeper 4 is probably not not that... It's not that great, in my opinion. Uh, you can run it, but you're often going to have to transition out, because you're not going to go to Keeper 6. So, you're just going to like throw out all your Keepers and to run an actual comp. But, um, maybe now you keep Jarvan, because this is a lot of damage on Jarvan's ability. Jarvan's ability is really good. So, we'll see on that. Um, Jax, so in Duelist, uh, Jax is your front line, and he's a little too good at being your front line. So, they're nerfing, they're nerfing his total mana cost by 10. That's it. It's, it's a fair, it's a fair nerf, because he's, he's overperforming quite a bit in that build, I think compared to what his role probably is supposed to be. Um, he's basically a frontline unit in out, outside of any of the frontline cl um, classes. Uh, Timo, this is an interesting one, because I've always viewed Timo as a utility champion. He's not, he's not there to kill anything. He's there to provide the blind utility. Apparently, they disagree with that statement, and have decided to give him a bunch of buffs. Um... I understand why they gave him buffs, because his ability is a damage over time. So, and oftentimes a damage over time needs to do more damage than, like, a straight damage. Because it's, it's over time. Um, and also because of the way Sharpshooter works, this doesn't... This damage over time scales down as you get the ricochets. So, they're the opinion that you need to buff him. And I'm kind of like, alright, we'll take it. Um... I just view him as a utility champion, is the thing. I, I never really viewed him as a damage, and now he's going to do more damage. Kennen. Kennen 3-star gets a gigantic ass damage buff. Actually kind of laughably high damage buff on his 3-star. Um, does this mean you play Kennen carry? Maybe. Maybe that was the idea on part of the ninja buffs. Is that uh, Kennen can be your carry in ninja? I don't know. This is ridiculous. I can't wait to see it happen. Um, Vigar. So, this is a bit different than what was previously published. I believe it was supposed to be going 1-2-2, two, two, I think. Um, here's the problem. If you get an early Vigar 2, this, this 2 here 
scaled really high. Um, not to mention, if you got four, if you got the three star Vigar, like really early in the game, he just like scaled up into the moon at some point and just looked down on all the plebes while he blew all of them up to kingdom come. Um, this probably is fair. I think a lot of people are complaining about it because this is a Vigar was a build everybody and their brother was playing. I noticed that a lot when I was playing over the weekend, is that this was a very popular build. So, they're going to turn down the scaling that Vigar has, which is probably appropriate, but I wonder if they also needed to increase his spell power to go along with this change. I honestly don't know, but um, we'll have to see where this build lands. Um... That said, mages got buffs in other places that we'll get to later. Um, tier 4 units. Ari. So, a lot of complaints about Ari. Because Ari spirit bombs your whole team. Your whole team dies. And it's mucho grande sad face -oo. Every Everyone's just sad. Because your entire team got wiped out by a crit gauntlet Ari. And you're just like... Okay. What was I supposed to do about this again? Um, so... They decided that they're going to lower Ari's health to 600, which is fair. It allows you to target her earlier, maybe get her down before she casts. At the same time, they're also nerfing the 2-star and the 3-star Ari damage. 3-star uh, Ari damage just generally kills everything. Nothing survives. Like, crit gauntlet or not, like, nothing survives a 3-star Ari, and that doesn't change. This, um, maybe a few more things survive, but they probably don't survive with a crit gauntlet. Um, I think, I think there's an issue with Crit Gauntlet, and Crit Gauntlet's probably the real issue here with why Ari is so good. Gen 4 Shot. Okay, so, Gen 4 Shot looks like it got crushed, and we need to understand why Gen 4 Shot got crushed. Um, this actually was the same number in set 3. Uh, that was the same damage that Gen did in set 3. The nerf to this is purely because of how easy it is to 3-star a 4-cost in this set. That's entirely why. You now need to be able to contest 4-star four, 3-stars. Four uh, four it, it used to be in set 3 that they pretty much weren't contested. Like, if you hit a 4-cost 3-star, you usually won that lobby. With the consistency people have been able to do that in set 4, um, this needed to get dropped. Uh, this is a high enough number that I'm happy with. He's still going to blow everything to bits pretty often. But it's not going to be the free kill with like 3 ricochets that also killed. In reality, it was really the ricochets and the cost level that was the issue here. Um... Like, the ricochets with this would just kind of, like... It, it wiped out entire teams. Riven. Riven got another nerf at 3-star again. He shocked everybody. Um, eventually, this will get down to probably, like, 900, and we'll be like, hey, this is fine. I'm going to be honest with you. You probably shouldn't be playing Riven for the damage. You're probably playing Riven because of the shield that she gets off Dusk's 4. Which is ridiculous. Talent True Psych Damage. Um, so this is the same thing. The the three star um, Talon was kind of a murderer. He would wipe out an entire team pretty easily with an IE. So they they're toning that down a little bit. Tier five units. Azir's Azir three cost now murders things. Yay! It didn't before. Now it murders things. Cool. No problems here. Kane, uh, we're going to talk about Kane. There's a lot to talk about with Kane. Um, so technically, Kane's getting a nerf at one star, and his shadow form bonus is going down. That doesn't matter. Um, Kane has become probably the best five cost in the game. Uh, it used to be set. They've got set in a nice place now. Now Kane is murdering everything. Um, Kane is supposed to murder everything. But Kane, particularly like at one and two, was probably murdering everything a bit too much uh i would look to see more nerfs to kane especially considering we're gonna we're gonna talk about him later because he actually got a buff this patch 
Like, compared to what they changed here, what they fixed in the bug fixes with him is, ignores this and makes it a buff. Um, Lilia is getting a scaling bonus, so there was a few champions, and Xylan was another one, where the, there really wasn't a lot of differentiation, uh, differentiation between the one-star and the two-star variants of them. So, they're adding in some of that. Um, I would actually probably view this as a nerf to Lilia, uh, to be honest. Um, like... Lilia's probably the least played of all the five costs, and I would see this and think of it as a nerf. That's just me. I'm not sure what you guys would think. But um, this doesn't really change anything, and it makes the one-star variant if uh, worse a good bit, really. Um, Xylan suffered kind of the same thing. There really is no difference between the one cost and two cost Xylan. It's probably even more so than the Lilia, because the Lilia will at least scale up damage. Xylan doesn't even scale up anything. Um, I think he might, he might scale up the heal amount, but that's that's not relevant. Um, all he scales up on is his health, and that's, that's basically it. His ability doesn't scale up at all, so getting a two-star Xylan like, didn't mean anything. So in order to change that, he now uh, revives three champions. This probably makes Xylan 2 very, very good. Like, very, very, very good. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would look to see Xylan getting a decent bit more play since now his two... He already got a good bit more play, but now it's probably a bit more valuable to look to two-star him. Um, in return, uh, they nerfed the two-star heal, which is fair. Items. Bunch of item changes that we need to talk about. First, Chalice it gets a huge damage buff. Like... This basically, in my opinion, this probably makes Chalice better than Death Cap. Not, not going to lie. This probably makes Chalice better than Death Cap, what this buff does. This buff is actually absurd. Um, I really don't know what else to say here. This is going to be one of the better... You're never going to make it, because it's not going to be a core item on any build. But when you see it in that 5th round carousel, you should look at it, and if you don't see one of the best items in the game, then you should probably be going for this. Because it's going to make your build way better. Like, it doesn't even matter what your build is. Your build just got way better with this. Um, one of the things I've always really liked about Chalice and Zeke's, um, particularly those two items, were they would make your champions that already had full items even better. So you could, like, scale even further than what you should be able to. So, I, I, I look to see this item be more popular. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a slam item. I think this is going to be an item that is the best of the worst when you have your dead items at the end of, at, the, at like, 5-1, and you're just like, oh, okay, I can make this and a good item. I'm going to go this way rather than making two decent items. Uh, Gargoyle Stoneplate is going back to what it was on the PBE. So, on the PBE... Uh, it gave the armor an MR boost per enemy as 15. It was really, really, really strong, so they nerfed it down to 12. They're bringing it back because the item isn't as good as other items. Um, I think it's debatable whether or not this is still going to be as powerful as it was on PBE, because I don't think Mage was as strong as it was on PBE, whereas Mage is really strong right now. And I think the armor boost in general is considered to be more valuable on Gargoyle Stoneplate than the MR. It's not that the MR isn't valuable, it's just that when you're surrounded by four different champions, the armor is more valuable than the MR. Um, lock it. So, I'm going to get a drink first here. Alright, so here's the thing about the locket change. A lot of people are talking about the locket change and think the locket change is actually ridiculous. It's very good. I don't think it's ridiculous. Um, so the base of locket goes from 250 to 350. It, it, the thing to know is that, the, yes, it's a lot of shield, but are you ever going to actually like straight up make a locket? No, it's going to be the same situation with Chalice, where it's not an item that's required for your build. You're just going to make it when you have dead items for it. I, I think what most people are worried about is this. This 600. 
I don't think the 600 does anything. When are you going to put a locket on a three-star unit? That's a very situational place where you're going to throw down a locket on a three-star champion. If you have a three-star champion, odds are it's your carry, and you've already devoted three items to it. I think the only other time you have that is when you pick up a late chosen that somehow magically gets you a, th a three-star. So, in reality, you're going to be in this land, which is strong, but I'm not sure just, like, is this going to be enough to be ridiculous? Probably not. It's probably just going to be an item that you make with excess items that's just, like, better than other junk you can make. Which is the probably the goal of this change, which I think is appropriate. Ludens. So, Ludens is getting the Static Shift treatment, where it now does bonus damage on two shielded or crowd control enemies. Um... Yes, this is a lot of damage. Um, there's already a lot of talk that this is ridiculous on champions like Sejuani. Because, I mean, Sejuani, you're, you're doing this every time. Um, it's also been noted that this is ridiculous on Nami. Uh, I think there's a lot of talk that this might be overpowered on Nami. But I also think that's a very specific build you're going to be running. Uh, I, I've got my eye on this change because I think there is a world where, like, Nami with Luden's Echo is kind of ridiculous to the point that we might have to rethink this change. But for now, I'm going to let it go because Nami is just, like, not played <laughs> at all. So seeing Nami get played, we'll just watch and see what happens and then we'll complain about it. That's what we do as players. Quicksilver is going from 12 to 10. Uh, this... This set has a shitload of CC. This sh set has a shitload of CC to the point that everyone is building Quicksilver for their carries. So that way their carry does not get CC'd. I don't know what else to say. They nerfed it because everyone's ev everyone's playing too defensive with their Quicksilvers. They're not making aggressive items with their gloves. So, nerf the Quicksilver. Um, I think where this is relevant is probably mostly on Kane. Um, I think right now the point where Kane is at in the game, he can get to a place where he's basically just Exodia. There's literally nothing that can beat him unless you CC him. So this change means that you have an extra two seconds in which you, you gain back an extra two seconds to CC him and kill him before he like blows up all on your face when he has effective items. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this is fine. Um, I think they're probably going to have to relook Trap Call and QSS on how they want them to function in the game. Um, I think there are probably better ways for them to be designed and work in the game. It's, it's difficult in a set with as much CC as this to have an item that basically just negates all of it. So, uh, we'll, we'll see where we where they go from there. Static Shift. Static Shift, big damage buff to Static Shift's bonus damage. I don't think it's going to change much because it's, there's very few champions, I think, that can effectively use Static Shift. It's basically just Ash. If we're not playing Static Shift on Ash, we're not playing Static Shift on anything. Uh, Zeke's Herald attack speed bonus. Um, so, Zeke's, much like the change that went to Chalice, attack speed bonus. Yay, um, Zeke's is kind of the same. I don't think this is as busted as, as Chalice is. But that said, this is very, very good. Um, you can put it on a unit b beside a Zed and it just watch Zed go ham on things. So, it, it, it's a good change to make an item that could often be kind of worthless to be a little bit better. ZZ Rot Portal. This is actually a great change. I love this change. So, the champion with ZZ Rot Portal on it, um, now insta taunts. It'll taunt all nearby enemies for two seconds. It's actually, like, a really, really good change. I really like this design change. There was a point where we were making a lot of ZZ Rots, and we kind of stopped making ZZ Rots and started making Titans Resolves again. Don't be surprised if people start making ZZ Rots again to get the to get those free taunts on their front line. Make sure their, their set disappears for a little while. Bug fixes. Um cover some of the important ones. 
Pike's ability now hits slightly in front of him, allowing him to hit cornered units. So if Pike was attacking a unit in the corner, his ult actually could not hit them. It was a really awkward situation. Well, it, I should rephrase that. If Pike was attacking a unit in the corner, his ult could not hit them. There was just no way you could get his ult to hit that unit. Um, now the hitbox has been changed, so it actually hits that unit. Really good buff to Pike, who is a pretty decent champion that doesn't see a lot of play because he's just like a two cost. But um, good change. It, it, sh it should make him a lot better in the early game. Um, the chosen bug where you got a chosen champion, but it was actually just a one star that didn't have chosen. <laughs> um, that's been fixed. Uh, and here's the Kane buff. Kane no longer casts if there are no enemies in range he could hit. So, Kane would occasionally, when he got his full mana, he'd just alt and hit nothing. And then run up to try to hit something else. He won't do that anymore. He will now run up and alt them. Um, this is a pretty big buff that was really just a bug to him. And also why I think Kane is probably going to be getting a nerf again in the future. Uh, set no longer disappears. Um, issue with with uh, loot tables for fortune. All right, so that's about it for this patch. Um, I've been trying to think about where we're gonna go from here. I think the big thing is, I mean, everyone's gonna. There aren't significant changes to dusk here. People are going to continue to play dusk. Um, I suspect ninjas will get a lot more play. In particular, maybe Kennen change at 3-star was enough to try to 3-star him. Because, like, he's not played in any build. Which is kind of surprising, because he's Keeper. So you could easily flex him into a lot of comps just to get that 2-Keeper. But he's not. So we'll probably see a good bit more ninjas with uh, maybe even Kennen carry. I expect to see more Ludens. Um, if you get a... Nami chosen early with Mage. Um, don't be surprised if you see people slamming Ludens on her and just laughing their ass off. Uh, Gargoyle Stoneplay is probably better than Bramble. Uh, it's going to be matchup specific, but I think um, Gargoyle Stoneplay will probably be one of the premier openers after Sunfire Cape. Sunfire Cape is probably still better. But uh, there's nothing wrong with slamming a Garrel Stone play. Same thing with ZZ Rob Portal. ZZ Rob Portal in the early game is going to be absurd and really, really good. And you should probably slam ZZ Rob Portals as well. So long as your build does not need bows. If your build does not need bows, slam ZZ Rot. If your build needs bows, don't slam ZZ Rot. Um, on the nerf side... I don't think there's too much to talk about here outside the fact that I, I think Aphelios Moonlight, while not completely dead, is not is probably sitting firmly in S tier now. Um, also, the rework the Cultist will make Cultist 3 not as strong, so you actually stand a chance running something else against it. Um, and that should cover about it. Um... I like a lot of the changes here. The big change to the shops, um, I think, makes it, it makes the opening of the game a lot more smoother. So, uh, it's it, it's a pretty significant change. Um, but I, I'm, I'm glad... I'm both glad that they implemented the change to shops, and I'm glad they're taking it away. <laughs> um, by implementing it, we got to play around with it. We got to see how it worked. And I, I think at the end of the day, we kind of decided, you know what, we don't really like like this. I, I, I personally did not like the change, especially as someone who would often pass over champions they wanted in shop and then got angry when the next shop didn't bring them back. But um, I, I think it was good to both, yeah to have it implemented, see that it probably didn't do what we wanted, and then take it away <laughs> when we didn't like it. But anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, I kept this under 50 minutes. I knew this was going to be long. Kind of upset of how long it is, but um, I'm glad I've made the video. And uh, I'll go ahead and upload it up, and it'll be up for... It should... The patch should be up tomorrow, which by the time this video is posted, will be today. So, uh, hope y'all enjoy, and uh, I can't wait to see what the meta looks like. It's going to be really shiny.
Peace.